Alright guys, welcome back to yet another Clue Crew playthrough. Can you believe it? I didn't know if I was going to do another one, but I'm really excited. I just um, finished playing Legend of the Crystal Skull. Um, I will have a link to that playthrough in the description. Um, and let's just get right into it. Welcome to my latest case, The Curse of Blackmore Manor. To start, choose junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose gameplay overview. All right, that's right. I finally got some of the older Nancy Drew games to work on my computer, and I am so excited for this. I am going to choose senior detective because that's what I played on last time. Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmore Manor where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, ever since Linda moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's practically bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. So here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. <laughs> I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. Talk to you soon. I hope. Nancy. Night, Mish, and good luck. This one is, without a doubt, one of my favorite Nancy Drew games of all time. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played this one. Nancy! <gasps> Who's there? Hello? <laughs> Completely honest with you. If There's I something out there. Ever Where, said child? something like that? Over I there. I it out of there. I mean, so something fast. was out there. Oh, come in. And then if I got scoffed at like that, I, I'd be gone. I'd be like, sorry, I'm not I'm Mrs. You Drake. Anymore. I take it you and Nancy Drew. Yes, and I really did see something, Mrs. Drake. I heard something too. People are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, oh, sure. especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. I'd like to see Linda, if I could. I'm afraid Linda is uh, not quite ready to meet with you just now. But please, come see me after you've unpacked. I'll be in the conservatory. All right, thank you. Gosh. You think she doesn't like Americans? All right. Well, let's get started, shall we? Um I know that it's not, you know, like the typical way you're supposed to start the game, but um Every time I start playing this game, the very first thing I do is this is okay so this is what I do even though I have nothing to do with it I always open this box always I don't know why I just do all right so let's look back at it um So, Draco, Leo, Lepus, Pisces. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, is it Leo? so right yeah and then no yeah okay and then Pisces is blue like doing that first you know it's there I like to get it out of the way and now we're one step out of the game now Ethel do I have to learn this yes I'm afraid you do if I do well can we play a game yes but only in French, only in French. No. I hmm. hate this I hate this I hate oh, looking at it. it stay in Italy as long as you want then some kind of husband you're proving to be. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. Hmm, somebody's angry. Maybe we should check in on her. Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. Well, welcome to Blackmore Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. So, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Well, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like something really strange is happening. Your mother is very concerned about your condition. My condition? What's my mother told you? What her son-in-law keeps telling me? That it's all in my head? That I'm just an unhappy new bride, that I just need time to adjust? <sighs> I'm tired all the time, my mouth is dry, my vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. That's everything you need to know. Now if- Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay. That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me, there's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. Please, Linda, just tell me what's wrong. Linda? Okay, I'll let you rest, but I'll be back. I'm here for you if you need me. My mom pulls that on me all the time. Just stops talking. <laughs> uh -huh, look! Hi! You must Hello. be Nancy. I'm so pleased you're here. I'm Jane. I know you've come to visit my stepmom, but I'd love it if you could pop by whenever you get the chance. Oh, we'll have such fun. Let's play a game. No. no. Not right now. Maybe later. I'd like to ask some questions first. Sure. What do you want to know? About Mummy? Uh, I mean, Linda. I do hope you'll help. She's been a bit out of sorts lately. Do you know why she doesn't want to be seen? I think maybe it's because of the lady in black. I was playing in Mommy's room when she wasn't there, and when I looked up, there was a lady all dressed in black putting something on Mommy's nightstand. The woman left something? The lady put a note on Mommy's nightstand, but I didn't read it. That's when Mommy started feeling poorly. I don't want to think about that. Let's play a game. It will cheer me up. 
Mm. Not right now, but maybe later. You can come in any time you want, even if I'm not here. I've got some really smashing things. I'm so happy you've come, Nancy. I hope you can make Mommy feel better. Alright. Alright. Let's snoop around a little bit. Mm. Mm. Nigel gave that to me when I was in the library once. I think he was hoping it would scare me, but it didn't. I'm too smart to believe in that sort of stuff. <laughs> All right, so all about werewolves. Well, like and Poppy. It's scary looking, huh? Look at these eyes. The nails grow long. <laughs> what is this? I, I've never been able to figure it out. Why? The reasons for why this stuff. This phone number just might come in handy. Mm-hmm. So a research psychologist such as myself, information gathering is a never-ending process. All right. So that's that. Who's this? That's my mum, my real mum. She's an opera singer. It's not like she's famous or anything, but she does live in Paris. What is this book? Don't know, really. Ethel gave it to me. She said it belonged to my grandfather. Do you think Brady Armstrong is cute? Oh, changing the subject, huh? Well, since you asked, no, not really. Let's take a look at what Brady Armstrong looks like. I totally love that show. Isn't Brady Armstrong so dreamy? Total hottie. Mm. I love this little drawing right here. Do you think she did it? <laughs> looks like you're learning some interesting stuff. Bet you wouldn't say that if you were the one who had to learn it. So, regular lessons from 6 to 2. Alright. I think it's funny that they're so... All her lessons are like centered on just that one relative. Uh -huh -ho. Check this out. I lost track of how many times I've done this. Just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it and something cool will happen. <laughs> I think you have to do it like ten times. Something like that. Easter egg. I actually don't know where any of the other Easter eggs are. You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. When? I don't know. I'd really rather not think about it, alright? It's a cute guinea pig. Anyways, yeah, we got an Easter egg. Isn't that exciting? Mm -hmm. That was written by Charles Pemberlin way back in like the 1500s. When I read it, it seemed really familiar, you know? <laughs> As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends and toast to their memories and happiness and wonder. With the stalwart heart of a knight, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a dedicated geometer, and fear not the ravages of father time. 
For dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy soul. Practically have that memorized, you guys. Did you see that? Did you see that? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Anyways, it blinked. Oh, you startled me. You must be Nancy. I'm Jane's tutor, Ethel. How? Where? I've just been sitting here opening and closing the door. Hello, um. Ethel. Jane is very excited you're visiting. You're all she's talked about for the past week. Well, I mean, I am great. Wow, I feel so embarrassed. I didn't think I'd have a fan club all the way over here. Yes, well. I'm sorry, but I'm in a bit of a rush. I need to go over some things with Jane. Oh, I guess I'll be going then. It was a pleasure meeting you, Nancy. Our paths will cross again, I'm sure. Hmm. Anyways. There goes my cell phone. Hello? Hi, Nancy. It's Mrs. Petrov. How is everything? Have you seen Linda yet? Literally speaking, no, but I did talk to her. Not that she told me anything. I'm just about at my wit's end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Maybe she's just unhappy here. I don't know why. I mean, she absolutely adores Hugh. She was thrilled when they got married and couldn't wait to start a new life with him and his daughter there in England. Something has changed her. Something in that house. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. Where is Hugh? He was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. He'd much rather be there with Linda, although... Although what? It's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason, which doesn't make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even-tempered. She never gets angry. At least she didn't used to. Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care of Blackmore Manor ever since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. In what way? The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, prowl in hand, <laughs> murmuring to herself. You'd think she was burying something. Or somebody. Goodbye, Mrs. Petrov. Goodbye, Nancy. Oh, one more thing. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town, and, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. All right. Hmm. Hello. Ah, yes. Are you here from the agency? It's about time. Oh, it's kind of laggy there. No, I'm Nancy Drew, a friend of Linda's. How do you do? I'm Nigel Mukherjee. Again? I'm Ooh. researching the Penvalent family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Penvalents. Until now. Why do you think that is? It might have something to do with their scandalous history. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. Oh, which is it that we are so interested in? Uh... Is that what you're going to write about? I'm quite curious about their progenitor, Randolph the Red. He was a brilliant soldier in the 15th century. As a reward for his exemplary military service, he was given the land that surrounds this castle as well as the castle itself. Some say the source of his military strength was a strange stone. Of course, that's all legend, but it makes you wonder, doesn't it? 
Are there any other interesting people in the Penvalen family? There are several skeletons rattling about in the Penvalen closet. Take, for example, Eleanor Penvalen, tried and convicted of witchcraft in 1650, quite the height of the witch trials here in Essex. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. But she wasn't actually a witch? Who knows? Lady Penvalen was a rather vocal critic of Cromwell's policies and helped many of his enemies flee the country. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown, although many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange, ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor, tolling their charmed chimes. When I arrived here, I saw some kind of creature with red eyes outside. Perhaps it was the Blackmore Beast. What's that? It's a story that's been told for generations out here. During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and giant fangs prowling the moors. They asked the mistress of Blackmore Manor, Eleanor Penvalen, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting the creature. It was rumored that the beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvalen secret. Penvalen secret? For centuries, the Penvalens have been very secretive. Some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure, or of some dark secret. Have you seen any runes anywhere in the manor? You mean like Norse runes? No, I haven't. I don't really know much about them anyway. Dead languages aren't really my bag, you know. You mentioned some kind of scandal with the Penvalen family? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmore Beast. I'll let you get back to your work. Valet! All right. So, there's one more person to go meet. I mean, we've already met her and she was rude, but we'll go actually meet her, it's fine. Come on, game. All settled in? Good. I'm happy that you're visiting Linda, but I know how much you've teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you, but please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. Is anyone else staying here? We do not have any permanent house staff, if that's what you mean. The Penvalens have always been self-reliant. We get on quite well without being continuously mollycoddled by a squadron of insipid, gossiping ne'er-do-wells. Now, we do have two other house guests. Our Mr. Nigel Mukherjee, who is researching the Penvalen family history in the library, and Ethel Bossany, Jane's tutor. Do you know what's wrong with Linda? Oh! Linda simply needs some time to adjust to her new living situation. England is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. Hmm. I don't know about that. Her mother told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? I don't know, and the doctors don't know. No one seems to know anything. All I've been told is that Linda is unwell and that in her stead, I must look after matters. Now, please, I really do not have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not break anything and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules Jane seems incapable of following. And before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation is rather unorthodox. I've made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. Oh, trust me, I will. The picture book in Jane's room. Do you know much about its history? My brother Alan found it somewhere in the house. He was quite fascinated by it, but he'd never let me look at it. I'm concerned about that thing I saw outside. 
It was purely your imagination, unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry about with Linda. And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate. Rude. I do not want you tracking mud all over this house. I've never. What was your brother Alan like? Oh, he was quite remarkable. He taught linguistics and computer science and won many prestigious awards. He loved games, especially pranks, and was forever tinkering with this and that. I do miss him sometimes, but now he's gone. He died a month after my husband passed away. And ever since I've been here all alone, until Hugh came back from the United States, that is. Goodbye. Run along. All right, and that is where we are going to end the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.